Good morning. We come to the end of this uh, series on Jesus Revolution. And today the theme is loving in a new way. And our scripture is from the Gospel of John again, the 13th chapter, the first 20 verses. Um, and I'm going to read you the first verse here to get us started. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. And then the passage goes on to describe Jesus uh, washing the feet of the disciples and an exchange with Peter. Uh, about uh, not wanting to be washed and then wanting to be washed all over. So I wanted to begin by asking you, have you ever experienced um, a foot washing as a part of a worship service? Mm -hmm. um, yes, and I hated it. <laughs> it's, it is a uh, humbling uh, experience. Um, one of the times that I experienced it, there was a, a man that he had uh, something that I had done along the way had really touched this man. His name was Bill Brewer. Mm -hmm. And he was a big bear of a man. When he hugged you, you knew you'd been hugged. But in this service that uh, it was a, a, a men's team on a, a weekend retreat that we were uh, practicing going through this service of foot washing. Mm -hmm. And I remember that as I sat down to have my feet washed, that Bill pushed somebody else out of the way so that he could wash my feet. And he said that he just had to do that for me. Uh, I never understood why, but that was extremely humbling mm -hmm. for him to uh, go to the, not just to humble himself to wash somebody's feet, but that he wanted to wash my feet. Uh, like I said, I never understood exactly why that he did that. The practice as it is here, what, it, what is happening is that, um, well, it, it was the responsibility of the host uh, when you had a gathering in your house. It was the responsibility of the host to provide uh, so that the, the, your guests could have their feet washed. Um, in the... Um, movie the jesus revolution there's a scene in that movie um i think probably one of the best scenes in the movie that the uh pastor of a small church in uh somewhere in california had uh befriended uh these people who were called the jesus freaks and allowed them to come into his church and to worship with them and they soon were packing the church uh, as they spread the word that they were all welcome here. And the, the, the trustees and the elders came to the pastor and they told him that he had to tell them they couldn't come in anymore. And the reason was that they weren't wearing shoes and their dirty feet were going to stain their carpet. Uh, and so therefore they weren't welcome to come into the church. The next Sunday, the, the scene opens with the pastor sitting there at the door of the church and he's got a basin of water in front of him and as these people are coming he's washing their feet uh, and then telling them that they're welcome to go on in and one of the elders comes up and he looks at it and he just turns around and walks away now he couldn't believe what he was seeing there uh, it was a humbling thing for jesus to uh kneel and to wash his disciples' feet, to do what none of them would do for each other. Now, in the scene that is set here, this is a Passover celebration that they have gathered for. When you go back to Luke's gospel and you read Luke's account there, you see that there was something else that was going on at this time that John doesn't mention here. Uh, possibly because John was one of the principal uh, uh, players in the incident that's recorded in Luke. In Luke, you have um, the disciples arguing over uh, who gets to sit beside Jesus. Uh, and it's James and John that are, that are um, arguing that they want those positions. 
Um, the Upper Room produced a film several years ago that uh, shows and, and talks about this Passover meal, and it shows that dispute that's going on there, but it brings Peter into the fray. Um, the gospel don't have Peter as a part of that, but you can't help but think that uh, if James and John are up there vying for the spot, that Peter's going to be right there in the middle of it. And, and that as the scene unfolds, Jesus kind of rolls his eyes at, at the pettiness of his disciples. And as the scene cuts away in, in this film that they produce, uh, you can hear Peter muttering kind of just uh, to himself, but loud enough to, to be heard, uh, that I'm the only one that walked on water. Um, here again, setting himself above. And Jesus is trying to show them or showing them here that he's their undisputed leader. And he's willing to do uh, for them as I said, what they would not do for themselves, um, that none of them would take up this role uh, there. Um, Peter, uh, in the exchange, he says that uh, uh, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. And then Peter says, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and head. And Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. Um, there's a, a double, I mean, a, a veiled reference here. Um, literally, as, as you prepare to go to someone's uh, place for a celebration, you would have bathed uh, before you came. And so the only thing needed was to have your feet washed as you as you walked on the uh, dusty roads. Uh, as our roads are getting more more <laughs> dusty, you look at the back of our car and you can see that um, a dust cloud follows us into our house um, off of our uh, lane, our, our road. Uh, but there's also. Uh, in this other level, John's gospel tends to have things on levels. Uh, we talked last week about the the, uh, the way that John presents uh, material that Jesus enters into this dialogue and there's this ex exchange of misunderstanding and then Jesus explaining. Well, there's also this double levels of meaning, a, a literal meaning and a, and a more spiritual or theological meaning here. And it seems that what Jesus has in mind here when he says um, that um, uh, unless I wash you, you won't have a, uh, those who have, who have bathed need only to have their feet washed. Um, there's a reference to baptism here, mm -hmm. that baptism is a symbolic cleaning, cleansing. Um, which brings uh, another uh, point to mind here, and that is of the sacraments. Um, traditionally, the, the sacraments are, are held up to be those acts that Jesus did and commanded his disciples to do. Um, and in the United Methodist Church, there are only two sacraments that are practiced, and that is baptism and communion. In the Catholic Church, I believe there there's either seven or nine, um, I think, depending on on, on how conservative um, the, the order is. But there's at least seven sacraments um, in the Catholic Church. In the United Brethren, uh, they also include foot washing. And under that definition of, of uh, acts of Christ, which commanded his disciples to do, uh, you, you can see how foot washing would enter into that uh, as, as a part of the sacraments there. At the end of this uh, session, uh, this, uh, six, this passage, in uh, verse 18, um, I'm, not na I'm not speaking to all of you. I know those whom I've chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture the one who eats my bread has turned against me. Um, that's part of a, a, that, that reference there is from Psalm 41, nine. 
and Jesus only uh, quotes part of it there. And I wanted you to hear the whole, um, the whole verse there that Jesus is quoting. And this is William Barclay's translation uh, here. Even my bosom friend in whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Um, a, a direct reference that Jesus understands that Judas, what Judas has uh, planned to do and, and is going to do, that um, there's this reference of eating bread, um, that one provides bread even to those that you know are your enemies. And there are some other references there. Um, one that Barclay, that I remember that Barclay pointed out was when um, Joseph uh, uh, brought, uh, I believe it was one of Paul's sons um, who had been disabled uh, or crippled, a birth defect, uh, and uh, sent bread from his table or invited him to dine with him at his table, even though um, uh, this, that being the son of Paul, he was a competing uh, heir to the throne, uh, the kingship of the people of Egypt. Wait a minute. I don't understand what you're talking about. The washing, I mean, uh, this uh, sharing of bread. Yeah, but I don't understand the Egypt part. Paul? Paul, one of Paul's sons. Paul who? The, uh, not Paul, Saul. I misspoke oh. there. I, I can see where you could be confused <laughs> there. <laughs> Saul, um, one of his sons, uh, who, who I believe, if I remember correctly, had a birth defect. And he was the sole surviving male heir uh, to Saul after Saul had been uh, assassinated um, on a battlefield. And David invites him to come and sit at the table with him. Um, the final thought uh, here is that uh, one of um, th there's th this feeling of uh, there could be this bitterness at the disloyalty of um, Judas but Jesus doesn't dwell on that and, and instead he dwells on um, the, the fidelity of the disciples. A and Barclay, William Barclay, uh, likens disciples to being ambassadors or representatives of God. Um, a friend of ours, uh, Norman Ramsey, he's a Methodist pastor. He retired this past year. Uh, and, and he's from the Pamplin area of Virginia, but he's a um, in addition to being a preacher, he's a songwriter and he performs his songs uh, also uh, as part of uh, an evangelistic ministry. And one of the songs that, that uh, Norman has, his name is Norman Ramsey. Uh, one of the songs that Norman has written is, I want to be a disciple. And uh, every time I hear that, I kind of think of this passage of scripture um, and what it takes to be in a disciple of Jesus. But uh, I think sometimes we, we tend to look at the apostles and think of them as the disciples of Jesus and don't connect that, that that, that connects also with us. Um, that that uh, drawing, uh, as Jesus drew those men to him, that we are all drawn to Jesus in the same way and in turn sent out in the same way as ambassadors. Uh, if we make that connection with disciples, I'm not sure that we carried it to being an ambassador. Uh, I believe it's in Hebrews where the writer uh, talks about that uh, and uses that word ambassador, um, ambassador of God and Jesus Christ. Any thoughts? Uh, this, as I said, this concludes this whole series on the Jesus Revolution. Uh, any thoughts on this or this series uh, about how Jesus has turned things upside down?
Well, the thing about foot washing kind of brings back when you send them out two by two and they ask him if we're not accepted, what should we do? And he said, shake your dust off your feet and go on to another place. So the foot washing is okay, it's symbolic of start anew, afresh. Forget about what's past, dismiss all of that, go on and start from there. Don't think about what happened and what you didn't do or what you should have done. Focus on what you need to do when you go to the next person you talk to. Don't dwell on what's behind you. That's washed away like God has uh, forgiven all your sins. They're washed away. You start fresh and it's a whole new uh, uh, trip or venture that you can start it on because when we go on trips or vacation, you start out with a suitcase of fresh clothes, all washed, ready to go. When you come back, you might have dirty clothes or whatever. You didn't wash them along the way, but you start all your trips fresh and ready to go and ready to um, energize and ready to get on the road and do it. And that's what they were doing was getting ready to do it. And Jesus knew, okay, we're going to start fresh right now. Eliminate what happened yesterday or last week. We're starting fresh right now. There's... Um <clears throat> Shoot, thought just ran away from me. <laughs> uh, uh, in this series on Jesus' revolu revolution, uh, our focus has been on, on the scripture and how Jesus uh, either brought, brought a new interpretation of the scripture that they had had all along or sometimes just turned it upside down and said, well, you got it backwards here. Uh, and as I thought about um, division in the body of Christ, in the church, and thought about that, not, not just in the context of what's happening currently, but looking back um, in church history, um, that understanding of scripture and being willing to understand it and hear it in a new way seems to me to have been at the center of division within the body of Christ over the years. That when somebody brings a, a, a different understanding than what you've always understood a scripture to mean, um, human nature doesn't want to change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we don't like the uncertainty of something different that we don't know where that leads to. So we, we tend to put our hands over our ears so that we can't hear that uh, and then we don't have to deal with it. And blinders so you focus straight right. ahead. <laughs> that shakes our bedrock, right? <laughs> ah, We've been taught bedrock. that. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of that here in Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. There's some theories that the whole county is built up on one giant rock. Uh, depending on where you go in the county, there, there are some places that there's only a couple inches of dirt. In some places you might get uh, 20 or 30 feet of dirt before you hit rock. But one thing for certain, there's rock there. Rock down below, yeah. Not just rock, but rocks. Yeah. Well, you can travel the streets in, in the wintertime where it's got ice and snow, you know it's rock or close to the surface <laughs> under that asphalt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, as I said, this brings this series of um, the Jesus Revolution to a close, and we move on to a new series uh, next week. And I failed to note uh, what that series is, so I can't tell you this morning. <laughs> um, but Tune we'll in we'll later and find out. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> But we'll be with uh, Pastor Dawn later this morning as she brings this series to a close um, with her, her sermon. And I hope that you'll join us in our worship uh, and may God's blessings be upon you.